Glad to see you again. Do you want delicious party food or a steak voucher for six? Don't worry, you're on the right video. All steps of turntable setup. While I was preparing for the Y Viner and Turntable Setup seminars in the past few months for my local community, I have realized indeed there are many friends and new Viner files who are concerned and interested in the full steps of Turntable Setup. It's prompted me to come up with the mnemonics for the full 11 steps for your easy memory in your Turntable Setup, which is delicious party food or a stick voucher for six. This step is unnecessary if you are buying a ready-made plug-and-play setup that came off straight from the turntable manufacturer's facilities. Manufacturers who have been mass producing their turntables with mass pre-assembled tone arms of their choice. For example, Rega turntables with Rega tone arms, project turntables with project tone arms, DPI turntables with DPI tone arms, Audio Technica turntables, Pioneer turntables, so on and so forth. This step requires your active participation if you are mixing and matching tone arms to turntables. For example, fitting a Gelco tone arm on a Technics SL1200, an SME tone arm on a Dr. Fackert turntable, a Reed tone arm on a TW Acoustic turntable, a Rega tone arm on a Torrance turntable. You need to ensure that this step is done correctly with the correct distance between spindle to pivots established. The ideal tool to be used here is the Dr. Feichert NG Protractor and the detailed step-by-step -step usage of this brilliant precision tool is fully illustrated in my other video which I've published. This is the important first step to be accomplished because if not ensured, no matter how hard one try, one cannot achieve the ideal overhang of the cartridge along the way later. must be perfectly level and horizontal. Do not look down and belittle the importance of this step. Note that it is not just the equipment rack or turntable print or chassis that must be level. It is the platter that we are talking about here. The platter must be level so that the speed of the platter is stable the stylus is not leaning towards one side and thereby inducing any more skating or anti-skating force unwittingly and for the bearing of the tone arm to be functioning optimally amongst many other reasons for doing so. Your cantilever suspension, the magnex and coils work together closely and in a very sensitive manner to give you the precise signals for good sound reproduction and you wouldn't want to upset this with a tilted platter. This is such a critical step that all turntable users must ensure irregardless of the price of the turntable, be it a $300, a $3,000 or a $30,000 turntable. Third step, cartridge fit on. Tool number one, a good small non-magnetic screwdriver. Tool number two, your thumbnail. Have it 1mm grown and protruding beyond the nail bed. You need it to grip on and tuck into the nick of the boat and provide the stabilizing opposing force to your other hand tightening the screw. Too short a thumbnail or no thumbnail, you can't tuck into the nick. Too long, your nail will be too malleable. Tool number 3. The set of small screws, washers and bolts which the cartridge manufacturers will always provide packed in the box. Another practical point to take note. While fitting on the cartridge, accidents do happen whereby the screws, washers or bolts may drop off, bump off your body and into those ventilation holes of your amplifier or other equipment below. The more usual scenario is this. While trying to catch the falling bolts or screws, your fumbling hand and forearm while trying to catch them will instead knock them into the ventilation hose. So, practical advice, cover this ventilation hose. If you are working with a tone arm with a detachable head shell, easy. 
just sit yourself at a nice working or dining table to work on the cartridge fitting. And also, do not wear long sleeved shirts and those sweaters, woolly clothing because these may accidentally catch on to the stylus and damage your cartridge. Fourth step, tape down the platter so that the platter will not move while you are performing the next two steps. Accidental spinning of the platter during the next two steps can damage your stylus and cantilever. Fifth step, achieve the correct stylus tracking force for your cartridge. This will ensure proper tracking of the grooves and allow the stylus, cantilever, magnets and coil assembly in the cartridge to function optimally so as to give you the ideal sound quality. The master lacquer is cut tangentially by the cutter head but our pivoted tone arms makes an arc as it tracks across the vinyl record surface. Thus, the stylus cantilever will not be tangential to the grooves except at a maximum of two points along this arc. At these two points, which we call the now points, the stylus cantilever is tangential to the grooves and we maximize our listening pleasure and minimize the tracking error distortion by ensuring that these two points are met by proper setting up of the cartridge on the tone arm. The two most accessible to most will be the universal cartridge protractor available for about $15 online. Some turntable manufacturers also provide their own cartridge protractors ready-made for their preferred tone arms of choice. The Dr. Fikert NG protractor shown earlier also has markings for it to be used as a cartridge protractor. It will be good to have a small LED light to help you along. The aim here is to adjust the cartridge within the head shell until A. The stylus is able to hit both now points and B. While the stylus is at each now point, the cantilever is parallel to the hash marks on the protractor accordingly. If you can't really see if the cantilever is parallel to the hash marks, a rough guide would be to look straight down at the cartridge from above and check if the right edge of the cartridge is parallel to the adjacent hash marks the left edge and the front edge accordingly as well. In other words, the three sides should square up on the grid of interlocking perpendicular hash marks of the protractor. Aligned so, this should approximate that the cantilever below is also parallel to the hash marks. Azimuth denotes how perpendicular the stylus is to the record playing surface when viewed head on. Establishing perfect azimuth will give you hours and hours of listening pleasure as left and right channel output balance is achieved and channel separation is optimized as well. Accomplishing correct azimuth can be as simple as ensuring the cartridge body is parallel to its mirror image in the mirror cartridge protractor.
one is more particular considering the possibility that the cartridge manufacturer may have cemented the diamond stylus slightly off, tilting sideways and not perfectly perpendicular straight down, one can proceed to use the phosgometer in conjunction with the Hi-Fi News or Analog Productions Test LP. The latest tool, if one is most particular, is the Dr. Ficut's Adjust Plus 2. This step is simple, as generally, the rule is that if you track your cartridge at 2 grams, you would dial in 2.0 on the anti-skating lever on your tone arm. You may still adjust the anti-skating force upwards or downwards slightly from this reference point and listen and tune by your own ears and set the anti-skating force to your preference. The general rule is that at the designated tracking force, if the tone arm is set perfectly horizontal and parallel to the record playing surface, the cartridge cantilever, suspension, Magnets and coils will be operating at the ideal angles and geometry to give you the best sound. To align your tone arm to be horizontal and parallel to the record playing surface, a simple and cost-effective method used by many of us is to have a card with parallel lines printed on a piece of paper and stuck on it. Place this card on the record and just use plain visual inspection to ensure that the tone arm is horizontal and parallel to the record playing surface. Some would go strictly textbook style and achieve the ideal stylus rake angle of 92 degrees. The stylus rake angle is this angle between these two axes. To make this possible, one would need to use a digital USB microscope to take pictures inspect and readjust their tone arm up or down until they achieve this SRA of 92 degrees. Ladies and gentlemen, after shifting the cartridge back and forth in the head shell and adjusting the tone arm base up and down to get the correct VTA or SRA, the stylus tracking force will definitely have been changed. Thus, please remember to check the stylus tracking force again with the digital force gauge. And readjust your counterweight till you achieve the ideal stylus tracking force again. Yes, finally the last step. We ensure the correct speed of the spinning platter at 33.3 RPM and 45 RPM. Two methods. We can download the RPM app onto our smartphones or use the stroboscope speed test disk. Direct drive turntables are usually dead accurate in this aspect while those of us who use belt drive turntables will have to be more diligent on this matter and adjust our turntable drive motor speed accurate to 33.3 RPM and 45 RPM so that we can enjoy the music with the correct interpretation of the artist's musical intention and hearing the correct pitch of the vocals, pianos, trumpets, flutes and other instruments. Thank you friends for watching, I had a lot of fun making this summary video for all of you 
and I sincerely hope that you guys can use this set of mnemonics in helping you set up your turntables from now on. You can also click and watch the other videos which I've made for the detailed explanation and illustration of several other key steps under my channel's playlist titled Turntable Setup Steps. Thank you friends and see you again. Keep the vinyl spinning, keep the vinyl dream alive. We can do it together.